welcome to Fall Fire. I'm so excited to see so many of y'all here with us tonight. If you could please stand, we're going to open with a word of prayer. And then after we finish praying, if you'll remain standing, Legit Student Ministries from Linden Church of God is going to lead us in praise and worship tonight. So if you'll join with me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to meet on a Monday night in your house. God, I pray that your name will be lifted up in this place, Lord, that you'll be glorified. God, anoint our worship, Lord, anoint the message. Lord, bring us together in a spirit of unity. And God, I pray that you'll let your fire fall in the hearts of the young people and in the adults in this place. Lord, we give this service back to you for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, put our hands together for God. Woo! Sing, rise and sing. If you be touched by the mercy king, rise and sing, rise and sing, say whoa. whoa. If you are found and now you're free, rise and sing, rise and sing. Lift up the shout of victory, rise and sing. Rise and say, say, whoa, 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 Everybody rise and sing. If in your heart rings a melody, rise and sing, rise and sing. If you have tasted and you have seen, rise and sing, rise and sing, say, whoa. Yes, our God is risen and reigning, and we're elevating the glory of our God and King. Yes, our God is risen and reigning, and we're elevating the glory of our God and King. Everybody rise Who has come here to worship God? Amen. Yeah. We have another fast song for you. Uh, most of you guys have heard it on the radio, Like a Lion. I love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. Oh, this world I overcome. My God 
is not dead. He's surely alive and he's living on the inside. Glory like a lion, my God is not dead. He's surely alive and he's living on the inside. Glory like a lion. My faith is dead, I need a resurrection somehow. Let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead, I need a resurrection somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. For this world I'll overcome My God is not dead He's surely alive And He's living on the inside Glory like a lion My God is not dead He's surely alive And He's living on the inside Glory like a lion My God is not dead He's surely alive And He's living on the inside Glory like a lion My God is not dead He's surely alive and he's living on the inside of Lord, like a lion. The heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. together in worship not not for us to be seen but for Christ to be seen through us we ask that we hide behind the cross that we extol his name that it's all about Christ this is the reason why we gather this is the reason for everything it's all for him so as we play these next songs we don't want you to to see as just work people on stage and we're just playing we want you to get in the spirit of worship that's just you and him Here I am 
come before you falling in love and seeking your truth knowing that your perfect grace has brought me to this place because of you i freely live my life to you oh god i give so i stand before you god and i lift my voice cause you set me free and so i shout out your name from the rooftops i proclaim that i am yours i am yours and all the good you've done for me i lift up my hands for all to see you're the only one who brings me to my knees to share this love across the earth the beauty of your holy word so i kneel before you god i lift my voice cause you set me free and so i shout out your name from the rooftops i proclaim that i am yours i am yours and all that i am i place into your loving hands that i am yours i am yours here i am i stand with arms wide open to the world the sun the everlasting god the everlasting god here i am i stand with arms wide into the world, the sun, the everlasting God, the everlasting your name from the rooftops I proclaim that I am yours I am yours and all that I am I place into your loving hands that I am yours Yours. Here I am, I stand with arms wide open to the world, the sun, the everlasting God, the everlasting God. Here I am, I stand with arms wide open to the world, the sun, the everlasting God, the everlasting God. And so I shout out your name from the rooftops I proclaim that I am yours. I am yours. All that I am, I place into your loving hands that I am yours. I am yours.
thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. In my heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. In my heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the outside out, everlasting. Your light will shine with all else face, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the end. Cry out, oh my soul, cries my heart and my soul i give you control consume me from the inside out lord let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out Everlasting, your light will shine with all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out of oh my soul. Cries out everlasting, your light will shine with all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all pain, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the end. Side out of my soul, cries out from the air. Side out of my soul, cries out from the air. Side out of my soul, cries
guys in the back are working on a video for us. But, um, Lord, again, we just thank you for your presence. God, for the stillness that comes, Lord, when you're in a place. Lord, just be with us the rest of the service. And God, we worship you in Jesus' name. You can be seated. While they're working on that, um, it's really great to have everybody with us. When I turned and watched the folks from Legit start, um, there were some gaps. And I look out there now, and there's not as many gaps. It's great to see you all. I know we have folks representing Park Avenue Worship Center. We have some folks from the Sanctuary Church. <laughs> We have um, Mission Florida with us. You'll hear more about them. We have U-Turn. Woohoo! Come on. Okay, that's my youth group, so I'm a little prejudiced. We have the folks from Linden here with us tonight. Yeah, they're they're noisy too. This is good. Um, are there any other youth groups or churches represented here that I have missed? Okay, I just want to give you an opportunity. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. And we have the audio. If we can just get the video. Okay, there we go. Other countries, the hopelessness of extreme poverty pressures some parents to abandon, abuse, and often neglect their children. It forces children into bonded labor, including organized begging. It creates an environment ripe for child enslavement and exploitation. Such cycles run generations deep, but rescuing just one child births a new life pattern for generations to come. How can this be changed? The children's home in India serves as a touch point of transformation. Their loving ministry to poor, neglected, and orphaned children has brought an interruption to the terrible cycle. Through YWEA, orphanages like the one in India get the support they need to provide education, food, clothes, and the love of Jesus Christ to the ones who need it the most. Show your love by giving an offering, having a fundraiser, and getting youth, children, and adults involved in YWEA 2013. Don't just think about change. Don't just talk about change. Be the change. YWEA 2013. I remember as a kid when I was in youth group talking about YWEA and uh, I guess it kind of now that I'm an adult and I know a little bit more about the world and some of the things that happen in it it seems to be that it impacts me even more there are some numbers that they have put out with this YWEA that are pretty shocking in India there's 44 million at-risk kids of those 25.7 million orphans live in India that's more than any other country in the world. There are 15 million I children in India who are in forced labor. Um, one thing they put on another YWEA video is that many of those forced laborers, those little children, younger than our teens, only get one day off a year. That's less than I get. Um, there are 30,000 girls that are trafficked annually in India. That means that today alone, 82 young women were trafficked. And some of these are as young as seven and eight years old. There, um, there's a great need in India, but the greater the need, the better possibility that God can move. And it, for me, when I look at the pictures and I look at the numbers, I realize we have this children's home in India. They minister, provide a safe environment and an education to almost 500 students. It's a lot of kids. That's uh, about four times probably what's, or five times what's here tonight. A um, Bible verse that kind of popped into my head when I was thinking about this. It calls God, it's in Psalm 68 verse 5, it says that he's a father of the fatherless, a defender of the widows. And if we are truly Christians, we know that we should be like our Savior. And if he cares for those that are fatherless, then so should we. And when I was in college, I had to take speech class. And those of you who are in high school, you kids, you've probably had to take speech class too. Um, no one really likes public speaking. I'm very nervous tonight. Um, but 
it was impromptu and they had a little basket and you had to walk up there and you had to pull out a slip of paper and you had to talk for three minutes about whatever was on it and I remember praying now Lord you've got to help me I mean I just I can't handle this I, you've got to help me And I walk up there and I open it up and I am not kidding you it said on it if you could change anything about this world what would it be and why talk about a lot of options of what you can talk about for three minutes but it had to be you know a speech so I could only pick one and one of the things that I would change is how often the world looks at us as Christians and says why are they so mean why are they hypocrites why don't they do more good in the world around them that's what I would change and our call to action from YWEA is that we are to take action and be the change now change has a couple meanings change means something different it also means that stuff that rattles around in your car when you hit the bumps um, that stuff that you stick in the bottom of your purse or your backpack or you pray you have the right amount of when you go to the vending machine that's uh, how my youth kids are I have a lot of them that come up can I borrow a nickel yeah um, but it doesn't take much change I looked up online the average American household has between twenty five dollars and ninety dollars in loose change lying around um, I remember watching an episode of that TV show clean house this family's house was so bad they had like five hundred dollars in change in their house just buried under stuff what if everybody in this room went home they got their change and they used it for something good what if they took their change to be the change what about tonight I don't want you to just give a couple pennies tonight um, I thought about the story of Moses when God called him Moses was a chicken I'll be honest with you it's a lot like me um, I love his story but God called him and said he asked him he says Moses what's in your hand Moses is like he's a shepherd he's like a stick okay what should I do with it God gives us things in our hands he's put something in your hand tonight maybe not in your hand yet but when you reach in your wallet it can get in your hand um, tonight I would challenge you to take what you have in your hand and use that to be the change the offering that we take up tonight is going to go to YWEA to this orphanage in India it will go to help these students one of the things they're in desperate need of is they need to improve their school if they don't from what I read today on YWEA's website the government in India will shut them down um, as a school so when we give we're helping that we're helping clothe them we're helping feed them um, we're helping more than anything for them to know the gospel so I'm gonna ask our ushers to come tonight and we're gonna start um, we're gonna take up our offering from the front to the back tonight and legit student ministries is gonna um, play some music for us as we take up the offering but if everybody will stand one more time exercise for me um, let's go ahead and pray and ask God to bless this offering Lord once more we come before you tonight Lord, with an opportunity for us to make a difference in a place so far away from here Lord in the other side of the world but God we have the opportunity tonight to take what's in our hand and we have the opportunity to be the change Lord, I pray you'll bless what's given Lord, that you'll multiply it that it'll go and it'll empower your servants to do your work and Lord it'll help us to be like you and we ask that you bless it in Jesus name Amen go ahead and take up the offering Oops. With all I'm holding inside, with all my hopes and desires And all the dreams that I dream, with all I'm hoping to be And all that the world will bring And all that fails to compare You say you are all of me I wouldn't have it any other way I got a savior and he's living in me Whoa, I want to know I want to know you today Cause you're the best thing that has happened to me And the world will never take The world will never take you away With all I'm holding inside With all my hopes and desires 
And all the dreams that I've dreamed with all I'm hoping to be And all that the world will bring And all that fails to compare You say you want all of me I wouldn't have it any other way I've got to save you and he's living in me Whoa, I want to know I want to know you today Cause you're the best thing that has happened to me And the world will never take The world will never take you away I've got to save you and he's living in me Whoa, I want to know I want to know you today Cause you're the best thing that has happened to me And the world will never take The world will never take you away Band a great round of applause. I think doing good. That's awesome. I want to invite everybody to stand up. I want to sing that chorus one more time. Put your guitar back on there, boy. I'm telling you, you guys don't quit too quick. I want to take some time and turn around and shake somebody's hand, go across the aisles, and and I also want you to take a moment. Everybody, just turn around, turn all the way around. Put your hand up towards the ceiling and just wave. We're live on the internet right now and somebody's watching us. And we want to say hello to the camera back there. You guys go ahead. I want you to turn around, shake somebody's hand, cross an aisle, slap a high five to somebody and tell them I'm glad you're here. All right. And all the dreams that I dream with all I'm hoping to be and all that the world will bring. And all that does to compare You say you want all of me I wouldn't have it any other way I've got to save you and he's living in me Whoa, I want to know I want to know you today Cause you're the best thing that has happened to me And the world will never take The world will never take you away right now. Amen. You can be seated if you can. Thanks for coming tonight. This is a great looking crowd on Monday night. This is great. Give yourselves a hand for being here. This is awesome. We want to thank uh, Pastor Odom and the Okoe Church for hosting this tonight. And Miss Rebecca, you did such a great job while ago. She's a nervous wreck, but didn't she do good? She did awesome. She kind of sounds like that girl on my GPS. 
<laughs> That's a new career option, girl. If you ever fail as a youth leader, you can always make it as a GPS woman. I just don't know how you're going to get in that little box. That's all. That is. That's awesome. Great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this gets deeper and deeper. She said, but I'd be going places. That, that's the truth. Um, we want to invite everybody that can afterwards tonight to join us in the building uh, to my left and your right. And uh, there's food and fellowship. And there's nothing like having good food and fellowship with Church of God folks. Amen. So don't hurry off and uh, stay a little while tonight. We won't linger and we won't let you uh, hang around here too late. But uh, we, we want to make sure that you're invited to come. I want all the youth leaders that are here tonight to stand up. We want to recognize you and say thanks for being here and thanks for your support on all your work that you're doing. Thank you very much. Stand up back there. Well, thank you. Amen. And uh, we appreciate you very much. Special uh, shout out to Tony Talavera from Orlando. And uh, Tony is a member of our state Florida Youth Leaders Association and a very sharp young man. Most of the artwork that you see coming out of our office and our fall fire uh, stuff that came out, Tony designs and does all that sort of stuff, and he does a great job, and we're just really proud and, and uh, glad that he's on our team. Amen. And um, I wanted to come up right now and take a little time. If you've been, if you were at home and had the opportunity to sit for the last 30 minutes, uh, you would have seen a few commercials, right? I don't want to disappoint you, so I'm going to commercialize you here for a few minutes tonight. And I don't like to do this really when I get up to speak because it just kind of kills the spirit of everything. But um, I, did, I do have some things that I need to share with you tonight. And uh, in case you don't know who I am, I'm Dusty Wilson. I'm the state youth director here in Florida. And uh, you are a part of a great network of people, not only here in the state, but around the world. You know, the Church of God is over 7 million members around the world. Isn't that awesome? Give yourselves a hand. That's superb. In the state of Florida, in the state of Florida alone, we have right about 400 churches with over 96,000 members strong here in the state of Florida. So let's give the Lord a hand for that. That's awesome. In the process of all of that, we have a very strong, viable, alive, vibrant youth ministry here in the state of Florida. And we're so proud uh, to, uh, to be associated with all of the work that the Lord is doing among our young people. We just finished a great weekend at uh, Why Mama. Somebody say, Why Mama? I don't know why you mama, but anyway, uh, that's how I learned that word. But in Why Mama, we had about 800 young people that showed up to be a part of Phyla Games, our 25th annual Phyla Games that was this past weekend, and it was just great. If you don't know what those are, it's just a weekend of crazy Olympics, and we go nuts, and we just had a great time. And was anybody here brought home ribbons or trophies? Anybody here in this? Well, y'all, y'all need to get together and practice before next year now. <laughs> bring some trophies home to this area. Amen. And um, we're also anxious uh, for some upcoming things that's going on. We, we have virtually something that goes on about every month around here, and, and, uh, and the Lord is helping us. And before I get on to a lot of that, I do want to say thanks for giving to YWA. YWA stands for Youth World Evangelism in Action. In over 50 years now, we've been giving, our young people have been giving towards missions around the world. And you've heard our project this year, India. Our goal this year is to raise 40 thousand dollars in the state of Florida. I think it's easily done if every church would give a hundred dollars in 27 regions that we have around this state. We can achieve our goal and uh, we'll be talking to some of you more about that after afterwards this evening giving you an opportunity to learn how the, you can continue to raise money for that effort and that project because uh, somewhere some point in time in the future maybe in heaven somebody's going to come up and say thanks for giving to an India project. And uh, I believe that the Lord is using us strategically in the last day. Amen. And uh, so we're a part of a great thing. We're a part of a wonderful thing, a global network that's really larger than life. And uh, I also want to say uh, that I'm proud to have my wife here with me tonight. And uh, Miss Jackie, stand up, turn around, wave at everybody. You're on camera. You're on live on the internet tonight. <laughs> 
Jackie is uh, responsible for all of our girls' ministries around the state, and she's brought some material to share with some of you tonight before we leave. And uh, so we just want to make sure that you stop by our table in the room next door after you get a plate of nachos and chili and cheese and all of the good stuff that goes along with that. Glory to God. I'm about to shout and run the aisle right now. Amen. In just a few months, we're going to be hosting our regional teen talent. If you don't know much about teen talent, uh, we're, we have some stuff to share with you this evening. We have applications and brochures and materials with us that I'm sure that you're going to want to make yourself aware of. We have a brand new teen talent manual with us tonight as well, and uh, it's, it's brand new. There are some new rules, and if you're used to coming to teen talent, you may want to pick this up because some things have changed, and uh, so you need to make yourself aware of that. Hold on to that to me, Miss. Rachel, thank you very much. Um, we also want to talk to you about, real quick, about um, our, uh, oh, there's Teen Talent again. I got more stuff about Teen Talent. We have a great children's ministry in the state as well, and our children's board, God bless you back there, and uh, somebody give her a Kleenex. We have, um, no, really, I'm serious. Um, we have uh, our, our children's event that's coming up in February is called Heroes Unleashed. And uh, this is going to be a great weekend experience for children between the ages of 7 and 12 years old. We hope that you have some that can come be a part of that at the campground. And it's going to be a phenomenal weekend. Our um, Sunfest is coming up March in Orlando. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Sunfest is going to be great. We've got Reggie Dabs. We've got Preston Sensuolo. We've got a lot of great bands that are going to be there. And it's a weekend of praise and worship for three days in, in the city of Orlando at the Hilton Hotel there just outside of SeaWorld, and uh, we want to invite you to come. It's going to be a phenomenal weekend, and um, I'm hosting that event. Last year, we had about 1,200 people there, 1,200 young people, and we were there for three days worshiping God, and it's just an awesome experience, and uh, I, I just don't know what else to say about that, but it's just great, and we want to make sure that you uh, have an invitation to come. Uh, we also have on our table that we brought with us some different items. We have pledge cards for YWEA. We have some fundraiser materials back there. And then something else that I'm really proud of that the Lord has allowed me to do to just kind of accomplish a dream. Anybody ever have a bucket list? I've, I've got a bucket list. Mine's got a hole in the bottom. But every now and then I catch something. You'll get that later. Um, I was asked by Thomas Nelson Publishers to be a part of something called the Impact Student Leadership Devotional. And this is a daily devotional. It goes every day uh, for 365 days a year. Did you know there were that many days in the year? And um, there's a devotional here for every day. And I was uh, asked to write three weeks of devotionals. So there's three really good, three weeks of really good devotionals in this book. And uh, I want you to pick one of these up. This is a leather-bound, uh, gold-leafed paged book. It's very nice. It's laid out very good. It would be a great Christmas gift for somebody, grandparents, mom and dad that are in the room. Buy a half a dozen of them. I'll make you a good deal. And uh, they're coming out on the family bookshelves this fall for $25. I have them tonight for 20 And uh, part of the proceeds of that are going to be going towards um, our India project. So thanks for your help. I appreciate that very much. Um, do visit us tonight. Stop by before you leave and uh, buy some nachos. Amen? All right. I wanted to just share a couple things about myself real quick and, and our family and just let you know that we are glad to be here. We've lived here in Florida now for a little over two years, and uh, this is not my first time to Okoe. I think we came a little over a year ago here to the church, and, and we're a part of a youth revival here, and God blessed and, and did some great things. And since that time, the Lord has uh, allowed my wife and I to be grandparents. And uh, the and two days ago, that's that's good. Two days ago, we became nine-month-old grandparents. Isn't that awesome? And I think we got a picture back there of little Riley. She's nine months old. Do we have that back there, Zach? All right. Then put it up. Don't just talk to me. We're we're live on the internet tonight, and that's not my granddaughter. Here she comes. This is Riley. <laughs> there she is. That's Mama's little pumpkin right there. Nine months old. Isn't she a knockout? 
Anybody else have a nine-month-old in here? Mine looks better than yours. Amen. <laughs> we'll fight about it if you want to later on. Go on to the next one. I want you to see just how she's a doll. We just love Riley. Uh, go on. There she is. She came and visited us in Florida a few months ago and got a little suntan, and uh, she's just, she's my girl. Uh, I've got one more, I think, of her, and uh, there. Uh, people on the internet around the world are going nuts right now, girl. We, we're bragging on you, girl. They, I, I feel too young to be a grandpa. And I, I just, I can't get over it, really. And so the kids asked us, what do you want to be called? And Jackie, right off the bat, she said, I want to be called GG for good looking granny. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Step back, that's all right with me. Well, I didn't want to be called Papa, Grandpa, all those are old names, you know. And if you have that name, God bless you, hold on to it as long as you can. But I'm going to be called G Daddy. I know it'll be a while before Riley understands how to say G Daddy, but she still gets whatever she wants. She can't even talk, dear God. Put that next slide up there for me, Zach. This is my family. This is a GG holding G baby right there. And uh, behind them is my son, uh, Dustin, and his wife, Sarah. Uh, they are youth pastors in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, they, they run about 150 or 60 kids in their youth group every week. They're doing a phenomenal job for the Lord there in any inner city work and, and visiting high schools and doing things of that nature. And so we're really proud uh, of them. And then um, on in the back there is uh, G. Daddy himself. Yeah, baby, that's good. And then my, my daughter is in front of me there. That's Morgan. Morgan looks like she's about 14, but she's a senior in uh, Lee University, and uh, she's in her last year and getting ready to uh, do student teaching and is planning on going to Ecuador. If, if any of you have money to loan me, I'll take it tonight, every penny of it, I'll take it. And uh, that's where she's wanting to go. And um, we went a few, uh, really several months ago now, I guess, it's two years ago, seems like just yesterday, because it really pains my heart. We went, and, and Morgan said, can I bring a friend to lunch? I said, sure, and we got there, and she was a he. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> I told you it pains my heart. And uh, Stephen, oh, God help me. And we went to one of those restaurants that had a larger-than-life steak knife. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I sat across the table from Stephen, and I polished the blade. <laughs> I looked him square in the eyes. It's not funny. <laughs> the ladies excused themselves and got up to go to the restroom and left me and Stephen at the table all alone make my day I said Stephen that's my daughter I don't know what your intentions are with her but don't hurt her don't abuse her don't talk bad about her because the truth is I'm not afraid to go back to prison <laughs> it really wasn't funny so uh, their relationship has progressed since then. Since we're on the Internet, I can't share family secrets, but he may pop the question one day. Pains my heart. The young man on the end is my son, Jordan. Jordan is a, uh, is a graduate of the mission team that you're going to see here tonight. Came to Lakeland after struggling some days with his life and living life on the edge. He's my flower child. Uh, Jordan's always into stuff he wasn't allowed to be in. Anybody have any kids like that? Don't raise your hand. Uh, but um, Jordan ended up accepting the call of God on his life, came down to the mission and graduated that program, ended up graduating Lee University and has his license and credentials in the Church of God and I know he doesn't look like me and wears his hair like me and good looking like me, but 
God's got a call on his life. And uh, Jordan's been in places around the world, and today he's in Jamaica. He's planting an orphanage in the country of Jamaica. And I want you to pray for Jamaica. And uh, the man that he's with there is Stephen Bush. Uh, they just went through Hurricane Sandy just went over Jamaica just before it hit the eastern coast here and uh, there was some damage done there there was a few lives lost in that country but they were safe and just a few weeks before that Stephen's wife gave birth to a baby so now I call him Dr. Jordan because Jordan was there God help us and um, and uh, in the process of that, Jordan has contracted something called cow itch. And it is about 100 times worse than poison ivy. And it's, it's all over his body. It's welts and blisters, and uh, he's in a lot of pain. And um, he has uh, contracted some other things while he is there. And so uh, the Lord has really helped him, but the devil has really battled him as well. And so... Um, Help us pray for them, for Jordan, and for Stephen Bush and his family, and I would appreciate that very much. But that's my little, uh, my little corner of the world, our saga, the Wilson family, and uh, we're so proud to be with you uh, here in Florida. We moved here from the state of Michigan, so how many know how glad I am to be in Florida now? Because in Michigan, in parts of Michigan, in just a few weeks, the waves will freeze in place. It's not very much fun. And I'd, I'd much rather see palm trees waving and the waves coming towards me. That's what I'd like to see. But um, um, in the process of spending the last six years in Michigan, I had the privilege of running into some of the finest young people in all the world. And these young people, some of them have moved here to Lakeland, Florida, to be a part of a group called The Mission. And Mission Florida is a uh, intense discipleship program where these young people have, um, have left homes and families and friends and they've moved to Lakeland and um, uh, they're a part of an educational program there and a discipleship program that's teaching them the ways of God. They're in the scripture, they're studying, they're taking college credit from different places around the country. But most of all, they're serving the Lord and uh, these young people, most of them will enter some place into ministry and follow the Lord's leading into their life. But I'm proud to know that they're a part of our youth ministry here in Florida. And uh, they're coming to minister in drama tonight. And they travel around this state. And some of you may uh, need to know that they're anxious to come to your church and your town. These kids, will uh, they'll work in your church. They'll clean up grounds. They'll They'll minister in the neighborhoods. They'll do whatever you ask them to do. They're not asking for funds. They're asking for opportunities to do ministry. And so um, they're going to come and perform a drama right before I preach this evening. Without any further ado, I want you to give a great Fall Fire Rally welcome to the mission. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from. 
from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Forever he'll reign. Come on, if you believe it, lift your voice and say, Come on, if you know it's awesome, say it. Come on, lift your voice. the Lord tonight and give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Will you give the mission team a hand tonight? Didn't they do awesome? Amen. They did great as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. I looked up here and some of these kids I've known since they were just uh, little tots going to youth camp and the Lord is really ministering their life. Praise the Lord. Isn't the Lord awesome? 
God is good and greatly to be praised. I feel his presence in here tonight. Why don't you slip up your hand and let's just love on him just a few more minutes. Would you do that tonight? Open up your mouth and just give the Lord praise in this room this evening and magnify his name. Tell him how much you love him. Honor him and magnify his name here tonight. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn into the book of Ephesians, if you don't mind, to the sixth chapter, and we're going to read a few verses of Scripture this evening. Turn to somebody and tell them, be the change. I borrowed this title from our YWA theme and because I feel like it is a message that God is wanting to share with us during this hour that we're living, not just for the sake of, of missions and not just for the sake of an India project, but because I really believe that this is a challenge that the Lord is giving to us in the last day. How many believe we're in the last days? Uh, Paul would encourage Timothy by telling him that in the last days that there would be perilous times, there would be days full of evil, days that were full of sin. The writer in the book of Matthew would tell us that in the last days that our days that we would see would be worse than the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't mind telling you here tonight, I'm concerned about our days. I'm concerned about our nation. I'm concerned about future. I'm concerned about the future of the little Rileys in our lives. Because should the Lord tarry, the days that we know now are going to be compounded with sin. They'll be worse than what they are right now. And our challenge becomes greater every moment that we're alive. And the Bible would, in, would let us know that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Look at somebody next to you and just smile at them real big. They're not your enemy. You may not like them real good, but they're not your enemy. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Man, this sounds like this sounds like a movie plot. This this sounds like some thing created out of Hollywood that has that has has created this this thing, this this plot, this storyline. We we could could almost insert this in some vampire movie. Haven't we made vampires look good? We've put some of the most glamorous people in Hollywood so that our children would be attracted to vampires. I hope you're not watching that schmutt. It's bad. And I don't mean that good. It's nasty, and it's not good for you. So don't watch it. It's just pretty simple. I could have an altar call right now. <laughs> the writer in the book encourages us to be strong. Now understand that we are living in the last day. We're living probably in the worst day ever known since the beginning of mankind. The author would state it something like this, that while we're living in the best of times, we're living in the worst of times. It's horrible to think that today alone, 82 young people, as young as 7 and 8 years old, 
were given into sex slavery, stolen off the streets somewhere in India as some form of cheap employment. It's mind-boggling to me in the hour that we're living, but when I stop to think about all of this stuff, I scratch my head and I ask myself the question, how in the world are we going to accomplish these things? How in the world are we going to overcome? How in the world are things going to get done? Turn to somebody and tell them, be the change. I've often talked to people and I love to hear folks say things like this. Wouldn't it have been great to be around the days that Jesus was here? Wouldn't that have been awesome? Wouldn't it have been amazing to sit on a hillside and watch Jesus feed 20,000 people with fish and biscuits? Wouldn't that have been great? Wouldn't it have been great to walk over into the cemetery and see Jesus with two of his friends, Mary and Martha, and him call out the name Lazarus. And the tomb roll away, and Lazarus comes jumping out with graves clothes on, and he comes leaping out of that tomb. He'd been dead for four days. Could you imagine the excitement? Wouldn't it have been amazing to walk with Jesus and come into the middle of town and watch a funeral procession go by and Jesus stop the procession in the casket and say, hey, wait just a minute, what's going on here? And the mother has her head in her hands and she begins to say, my son is dead and we're going to bury him and no, he's not dead. <laughs> And the casket lid opens up and Jesus kind of wipes the boy's eyes and he sits straight up in the coffin. He's not dead, he's just been asleep for a little while. Wouldn't it have been amazing to be around Jesus and watch crippled legs go straight and crippled arms go straight and blind eyes open and deaf ears open? Wouldn't that have been amazing? I think it would have been awesome but I'm kind of glad I wasn't there because I would have made a horrible disciple. You know why? You know how I know that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess to you. Are you ready? I like riding in cars. Have you ever seen a fat boy on a camel? I like air conditioning. Anybody here like air conditioning? It's 115 in the shade in Israel. I would have made a horrible disciple. You know what else I like? I like wearing blue jeans. Every picture I see of the disciples, all them boys had dresses on. Am I telling the truth? I like a nice haircut. They didn't have great clips in the days of Jesus. <laughs> Long hair and beards, and smelly bunch. I like walking through Dillard's and smelling perfume. I like the red light on Krispy Kreme. <laughs> I hate fish. And I hate fishing. That's how I know I would have been a bad disciple. But I believe God knew what he was doing by putting me here in the 21st century. Because he knew I'd like all that stuff. And I don't think Peter would have made a very good 21st century person. Couldn't you see Peter taking out his sword and cutting up the computer because he got mad at it? All of them boys spent time in jail. Every one of them would have been locked up today. But, you know, to be, to, to be honest with you tonight, God 
knew what he was doing by putting you here and putting me here in the middle of the 21st century in the year 2012. God doesn't make mistakes. You weren't here by some happen chance. You weren't here by some mistake. You weren't here by somebody's mistake at some awful night somewhere. God created you and breathed his life into you. He formed you by his own hands. He knew you while you were still in your mother's womb. He understands the call on your life and he knows what he was doing by putting you here to do God's will in the last day. Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Turn to somebody and tell them and say, be the change. I know days aren't easy and I know the days are rough, but, but, but really God understands because the Lord has made provision for us in the last day. He would not have put us here and not given us the equipment to be able to conquer the enemy. If God's going to call you, God's going to equip you. If God's going to give you purpose and reason, God is going to give you the equipment and the power that you need to accomplish the will and the work of God and the kingdom of God in the last day. It's ironic to me when I go back through the pages of time and I see what God has done with some of the most unlikely people. I go all the way back to the book of Judges. Do you know, do you know, do you know a man by the name of Othniel? Have you ever heard of Othniel? Othniel is found in the book of Judges chapter 3. And Othniel was, Othniel was responsible for bringing, for bringing salvation and peace and victory to the nation of Judah. Judah had turned their back on God. The country of Israel in their time had turned their ears deaf towards the words of God. Remind you of anybody? I don't want to get gross with statistics and things here tonight. The truth is they were giving themselves to other family members and creating wives among their own daughters and, and creating slaves among their own children. They were sacrificing their own children and horrible things were going on in that day and God would turn his face away from his people. You know what I'm concerned about today? The truth of the matter is today while our days have changed and our seasons have come and gone, human nature has remained its sinful self. Second John warns us of people that would love the world more than they love God. And he says if they love the world, they don't love God. What I'm anxiously concerned about in our nation today and around the world is that as America goes, so goes the world. We don't mind giving up our unborn children. We don't mind going against the things that God has said that we ought to stay away from. It seems to be more easily accepted. The nature of sin, the acceptance of sin, Acceptance of homosexual and lesbianism behavior. Acceptance of free marijuana and drugs. The acceptance of sinful leaders. Are you listening to me tonight? What causes my knuckles to turn white? It's an anxiousness that I have in my spirit. It's a call of God and a stir that he has among our generation and among generation of young people that I see the Lord raising up like a mighty army in the last day. Don't be susceptible to the things that you're hearing and to the things that you're seeing. Because while the world would easily accept the sinful nature of man, God is looking for somebody that will stand up to be the change in the last day. God would take a leader and allow him in his human frailty to take the jawbone of a donkey and kill a thousand Philistines. 
God would allow a young boy named David to pick up five smooth stones and take one of them to kill a giant over ten feet tall and save four other stones for his brothers. God will allow another weak-kneed, cowardly man to take a hammer and a stake and drive it through the heart of his enemy. There are all kinds of situations in the Bible where God chooses the most unlikely and he chooses the most unordinary instruments, but he causes victory to be done to the people that are seeking his will. Is anybody here seeking the will of God right now? In the book of Judges, there were, there were, there were a number of enemies that their country had, had seen, but there were specific people that God raised up in that book of Judges to bring victory to their land. To one leader he gave courage. To another leader he would give wisdom. To another leader he would give strategy. But to Othniel, he was the most unlikely individual. And Othniel would have nothing but what the Bible says is the power and the spirit of God. That's all they had. That's all he had. He didn't have instruments. He didn't have an army of people. What he had was the power of God. Can I suggest to you here tonight that same power of God is here to be poured out upon our young people in this last day that we have. We're not looking for tanks and military. We're not looking for great bombs and big guns. We're not looking for some streets to be lined with billions of people that will stand in the name of God what we need is one person that will rise up and say I want to be the change and be willing to be that ingredient to let the spirit of God pour out upon him the last day hallelujah while the Bible would warn us that in the last day there would be great peril and great sin and men would be lovers of themselves and they would love money more than they would love God. But also in the last day, according to Acts chapter 2, in the fulfillment of Joel chapter 2, we're standing here tonight as a fulfillment of prophecy that would say also in the last day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon your sons and daughters and your young men will dream dreams and your old men will have visions hallelujah the truth of the matter is tonight if we're going to be the change we've got to be willing to have an experience of revival with God and let the outpouring of the spirit of God rest upon us this evening I'll never win enough people because I'm cute that's a joke. There's no way that I could ever win enough lost people just, just by the way I preach. And by the time that I spend on the road and by showing them little pretty pictures of my family. The Bible says the only way we're going to overcome is by the Authority that we're fighting against. I would to God, salvation and the power of the Holy Ghost would hit the White House. Hallelujah. Don't stop praying for leaders. Don't stop praying for your president. Don't stop praying for mayors and governors and senators. God, help us to rise above what we see and hear. time that we stop playing these arrogant egotistical games with God he's looking for somebody for an Othniel who'll say here I am Lord he's looking for an Isaiah it'll take time to come to a church on a Monday night to look up from the mess that we're in and understand that we're here to see God 
The Spirit of the Lord is powerful. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And while the writer in the book of Ephesians tells us to arm ourselves with the armor of God, he goes through this ritual of, of lessons and instructions, and he begins all of this in chapter 6 by telling us, Obey your parents. Oh, man, I wish he'd have said something different. And then, then listen, he says, above all of these things, I want you to arm yourself with the shield of faith. The shield is probably one of the most important instruments to a person in the armor of God. In the Spartan army, in the Greek army, in the Spartans, the shield would stand as tall as the warrior. It wasn't a little badge that they had on. It wasn't a little shield that they clipped on their belt as a symbol of authority. This shield protected them from fiery darts. But your shield is there to withstand the enemy. The Spartan army is amazing to me because if you'll study it and go back through the pages of history, you'll find that since their infancy, they would choose their warriors. And from that very young person, even three and four years old, they would, they would teach them to hold different paraphernalia and instruments and mentally speak to them about being trained. And from the time that they were 3 to 13, they would take them through challenges and out on the battlefield they would play games with their young warriors and teach them to run and leap and to be strong. And from the time they were 13 to 20 years old, they would put them into training and vigorous training and they would take them away from their families and put them out on that shield and teach them how to use that and teach them how to protect themselves and how to fight with the sword and how to protect them. And at 20 years old, they would be out in force. And there was a time when they decided able to be raised as young warriors they would take those babies and take them high up on a hill and leave them to starve to death and die because it would mean nothing to them listen what I'm what I'm concerned about today is the fact that we're willing to let our children be 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 dead before they're even born and to not even even claim them and and we've accepted that as a way of life you know who they are they're young warriors that God has created and God has brought up and it's a shame to me. It's, a, it's frightening to me to look into the eyes of our future and understand where we are in our land today. But God is not through with us yet. God is raising up an army of believers and people who will not be ashamed of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Will you be the change? Will you be the change that God is looking for? A little lady by the name of Fanny Crosby was four feet two inches tall. She was hunched back over and crippled in her appearance, but yet she would sit down and write some of the great hymns of the church, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. 
A man by the name of William Seymour was so disfigured in his face that they would put him on a street corner to preach the gospel and people would stop because he was so ugly and disfigured they would just stare at him. But he learned that if he would just put a gunny sack over his face and preach that people would hear his words before they would see his face. And hundreds upon hundreds of people would give their heart to Jesus Christ because of the preaching of William Seymour. And great revival would break out at Azusa Street and begin to sweep across the land. And a great awakening in America grabbed the hold of a young man by the name of Dwight L. Moody. Dwight Moody was a young preacher, but he was fitting the shoes of people in a shoe store somewhere. Every day he would get down on his knees and he would hold the feet of some person and he would size their feet and put shoes on their feet and send them out and God saved him in that revival and God called him to be a great preacher and all around the world Dwight Moody's sermons have been have been have been labeled to have led millions of people to the cause of Jesus Christ in the process of where we are today I want to tell you something God has a purpose for you God has a call upon your life and it doesn't matter if you can speak with great eloquence. It doesn't matter if you could sing like a rock star. It doesn't matter if you could play skillfully. God is looking for somebody to be the change. It doesn't matter if you're slim and good looking and your hair is... told you some about my family and some of these young people that are here tonight know know my family and I brag on our family because time after time after time the enemy has tried to wipe us out 22 years ago my daughter Morgan was born we almost didn't have Morgan we pulled up in the hospital in that emergency room and my wife my wife was dead in the front seat of our car doctor took her in the hospital screaming I've got a code blue code 300 I found out later blue was the color of her skin 300 meant to turn the joels up as high as they'll go we got a problem on our hands we went into the hospital and the doctors had pronounced her dead she's on the record books as being deceased but in exactly one hour from the time we got there, we went in with no lives, and God gave us two. Amen. Florida to preach a youth revival and the pastor got a hold of him and prophesied over their life nine months to the day of the prophecy the doctor told him they were pregnant nine months after that Riley was born ten months later I'm G daddy something tells me God's got something special in Riley's life Jordan, my flower child. My God, I could stand here and talk to you about him all night long. We sent Jordan off to Eastern Michigan University. I thought he was going to school every day. He was sleeping in the back seat of cars with women and doing drugs and alcohol and out things Jordan was into 
my wife would go down into the basement of the house and lay in the closet floors and she would pray in the the, throughout the registers. You know what the registers are in the house? It goes into the furnace. You can hear your name. It's kind of spooky when you're in the basement. And you hear somebody, did, 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 and you, their name calls out all over the house. And She's down there praying in the Holy Ghost and calling out Jordan's name, taking him to places and leaving him in the car and say, Jordan, remember who you are. The power of God's with you. The Spirit of the Lord's on you. And, and somewhere in point in time, we got Jordan on a bus with young people from Michigan. They drove all the way down to Knoxville, Tennessee to go to Winterfest. And some point in time that night, Jordan climbed the rail, went down to the front, bowed his head to an altar in some 20 th- t- front of 20,000 young people, gave his heart to Jesus, and he came back home and he said, Stop praying because God has them here for a reason and a purpose. Will you be the change? Will you be the difference? I spoke this message last night in one of these rallies and a young girl came up to me and showed me her arms where she had tried several times to kill herself and she's talked to me in tears and she said, thanks. Up until now, I didn't know why I was supposed to be here, but after tonight, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I don't know what your gifts are, and I don't know what your challenges are, and I don't know what exactly your purpose is, but I can tell you that God has you here for a reason. God has you on your street for a purpose. God has you in that school for a reason. God has placed you in that family for His divine purpose. We can't do what we've got to do in our own power. The only way that we can accomplish what God is calling us to do is to be willing to let the outpouring of the Holy Spirit rest upon our life. But if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're just a step away from having the Spirit of God poured upon you. All you need to do this evening is to ask the Lord to come into your heart, to forgive you of your sins, and to join us to be a part of this. Brother Dusty, I need Jesus because I'm living that life of turmoil and sin. I'm living days full of confusion and bitterness and hatred. I don't even know why I'm mad, but I'm just mad. It's just all that I feel. It's that only emotion that I'm going through. Let me tell you something. God wants to saturate you with the power of love tonight. If you're here tonight and you say, Brother Dusty, I need Jesus, lift up your hand real quick. I'm going to pray for you and pray with you. Thank you. Thank you in the back. Yes, thank you. Somebody else, thank you very much. I want to pray with you, and I want to pray for you tonight. God wants to come into your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. I want everybody to stand on your feet tonight. We're going to pray. If it won't embarrass you, would you grab the hand of the person next to you and let's just pray one for another right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your spirit and I thank you for the presence of the Lord here. 
I thank you, Lord, for your love and the power of your love that I feel in this room right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're raising up an army of young people, Lord, tonight that will not be ashamed of your power and ashamed of your call and ashamed of the Spirit of God. Lord, you've encouraged us by saying to not be, to not be embarrassed by our age and our youth. And, oh, Lord, we're not... night. David said, see that inside of me, God, that there is no wicked thing. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And I pray right now that you would begin, God, to sweep through this house, to sweep through this house, God, with a great, with a great sense of spiritual forgiveness, God, in this room tonight. Hallelujah. If you need forgiveness tonight, squeeze the hand of the person next to you right now. I want everybody in this room to pray this prayer. And you be my Father, in the name of Jesus, be Lord of my life. Hallelujah. Now, would you just give him praise in this room right now? Would you love him and give him praise? Hallelujah. Can you guys come back to sing a worship song? I want everybody that can to come out of your seat and just come stand around the front of this room for just a few more minutes. If you'll give me just a few more minutes tonight because I want to share something powerful with you this evening before we leave. The group is coming back to sing. Come on up, come on up here. I spit, but I don't bite. Just move on up. I don't know if he's called anybody in here to preach, if he's called anybody in here to lead thousands in worship. I don't know that. But what he has called us all to be is the salt of the earth. And while our earth is in trouble and our earth is in turmoil, what's going to make the difference in our day is the seasoning that we spread out across our land, the love that we share with one another, the light of God that we, that we give. You know, salt, if I would just tip this up and taste it tonight, it would be awful. It would probably make me sick to my stomach, not to mention drive up my blood pressure. Salt in a wound, it'll burn, but it'll bring healing. All of you tonight have the power of salt in your life. And if 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 I were to have a few individuals tonight to just take some salt, there's no difference in the color there's no difference in the size of the grains it all looks the same as a matter of fact I'd like for you six people to just start walking among the crowd and I want you to pick out
piece. If you get more than one piece of salt, turn around and give it to somebody else. You see the power of salt? It goes a long way. But what's in your hand right now is no different than what was in the container. What's in your hand right now is no less powerful. He gave to Joel the same spirit he gave to Isaiah, the same spirit he gave to David, the same spirit he gave to his son Jesus, the same spirit he gave to the apostles in the upper room, the same spirit he gave to Paul, the same spirit that John the Revelator opened up his eyes on the Isle of Patmos and had a vision from God. It's change maker. God would anoint you to be the change. God would anoint you to be that person in the army of the Lord that would be willing to have the spirit of God pour out upon them tonight. What are you going to use? What are you going to be called to do in the name of Jesus? Come on, lift up your voice right now and ask God to pour his spirit out upon you tonight. Father, in Jesus that need a touch of God and a fire and a, and a spirit of the Lord to be poured out upon them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, God, to raise up every youth leader, raise up every young person, raise up them to be evangelists, raise them up to be worship leaders, raise them up to be preachers and missionaries. I want to change the world. Hallelujah. God, don't let us stop until... Him that's on your right and left. Ask God to raise them up. Ask God to pour power upon their life. Ask God to anoint them. Ask God to give them a word. Ask God to give them a song. Ask God to let them be the seasoning in a bitter world. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. If you're here tonight and you feel a calling to some ministry, you feel woo, you feel a wooing by God in some ministry of preaching or praise and worship or teaching or I don't know what it is, whatever it is, lift up your hand real fast. I want you to...
God, Father. Hallelujah. Stir the call of revival, oh God, in our life. In the name of Jesus, I want to be the change. I want to be the difference, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your anointing. God, let the of the kingdom in the last day oh God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah